Hello and welcome to some of my friends read comics. We've got Chris. Ah, my precious beard. <laughs> got Vince. Yancey Street rules. And I'm Kia. Hello, welcome to the show. Uh, the Yancey Street gang. Oh, famous foes of the uh, Fantastic Four who we are talking about today. Uh, actually, no, we're not really talking about the Fantastic Four. We're talking about the the Future Foundation, uh, which uh, at this point Scott Lang has kind of taken over with the. You know what? It's going to be great. He's got a new movie coming out. Give us a chance to talk about Ant Man. Uh, although he's, he doesn't really do much in this book, he's just kind of sad for a little while. <laughs> oh, yeah, sad stuff. Uh, and also, uh, make sure you stick around at the end of the show. We're going to continue our series on Crisis on Infinite Earths. Uh, this is uh, issue four. Uh, so we'll we'll get to all that. But um, yeah, we are reading a book from 2013, 2012, right in that area. Uh, it's just FF. That's the name of the series. Uh, and at this point, the Fantastic Four has their future foundation, which is like it's a bunch of kids, like smart kids from all different species of aliens and stuff that they've met. A few, uh, a few American, not American, just like Earthlings. Oh boy, America and Earth might as well be. Yeah, uh, we take over the Earth. Um, <laughs> what else do we got? Uh, what What else does the Future Foundation do? So the Future Foundation was um, created by Reed Richards to help usher in the future so mm-hmm. you know it's it for all intents and purposes it kind of feels like uh xavier's school for gifted youngsters it's just a lot of like kind of weird kids all hanging around a school but okay. but basically you got to go back to jonathan hickman's run which i think was around 2009 ish uh where reed richards decided that he wanted to solve everything and valeria his daughter was getting real smart at the time she's three i think in that book and so he had started a school to help like usher in the future and so publication history-wise, Hickman wrote Fantastic Four for about 20 issues, and then it turned into the book FF, Future Foundation. Mm, okay. Um, and then That's after, after Johnny Storm was presumed dead. Yeah. Uh, they changed the name. So Fantastic Four ended, I think, on issue 588, and then there were 12 issues of FF, and then there was Fantastic Four 600, and FF kept going. And so there was oh, FF. So they kind of like rebooted both of them at the same time right. almost. Correct. Correct. And then Hickman's run ended, and Fraction Matt Fraction took over. So he had the Fantastic Four with artist My, Matt, Mark Bagley, and then he had uh, this book that we're reading, FF, with uh, Mike Allred. And for the first three issues, they alternated. So what was going on is that Reed uh, Richards has like kind of like a cancerous growth on his arm, like his arm's not going back to to springing back; it's just staying long. So he and the family decide to go out into the universe and other alternate universes to find a cure. And he wants the uh, he asks Scott Lang um, and also She-Hulk, uh, Medusa from the Inhumans and Darla Daring, uh, Miss Thang, Miss uh, Thang, to uh, watch the uh, Future Foundation while they're gone. They say they're only going to be gone for four minutes and then they're not. They don't come back. So throughout the this book is also running parallel with uh, Reed and Sue's and the whole family's adventures in Fantastic Four. So you'll get hints that both like something is going to go tragically wrong with the Fantastic Four, and you know that from the FF book. You're like something's wrong, something's bad happened. Like the after this, we didn't read we didn't read the past issue eight, but stuff like people they the Fantastic Four met along the way in their book show up in FF to like update them on adventures and stuff. But anyways, mm. f- for this intents and purposes, it's just a fun book where they're at a school and it's uh, Ant-Man and She-Hulk and Miss Thing and uh, Medusa running a school with a bunch of weird kids uh, who were all recruited during Hickman's run. So there's the Moloids, which are yeah, from... Yeah, let's talk about them. They're, they're, they're mole people? They're from yes. uh, Mole Man's uh, city underground. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they kind of there's liberated also- them. And then okay. there's some Atlanteans, uh, just okay, underwater those people. Are the fish people. The Atlantis. Ubari, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember where Amome comes from. She's the girl. And then Black uh, Panther. Black that's Panther, right. yeah, because she says my dad has a panther. And <sighs> then uh, also uh, Artie and Leech. I don't remember how they got uh, looped in because I'm also reading I the Hickman read run right now. Something else with them, and I'm trying to figure we out what it them. is. We mentioned them last episode. Um, Ah, I, our- I probably did, but yeah, uh, they were uh, hanging around X books in the '90s uh, with Franklin that's, Richards. Yeah, and that's, then that's, uh, he, I think they were just grandfathered into being in Franklin's school. Yeah, mm-hmm. and Alex Power from the Power Pack um, was yeah, one of their friends. Them. 
Um, so, he's a little uh, bit older. He dresses like a, an Eastern European prince. Yes. Uh, this is, this is uh, New Warriors Alex Power, where he's like 17 or 18. Right. And, and then a clone of the wizard. Uh, I didn't realize he was a clone until way later in the story. I was just like, who's this piece of shit kid? Why is he hanging yeah, around? Yeah, Bentley 23, because <laughs> he's the 23rd clone of the wizard. Um, uh, that which, makes sense. Right. I, I tried to read this book like several years ago. Um, after I kind of lost interest in Hickman's book. And so, mm-hmm. like, I was similarly lost. But now having read, like, a lot of Fantastic Four, like, last episode, we had an adventure with the wizard. So I know a little bit more about the wizard now. Yeah. And uh, I was been reading Hickman's run. I'm like, oh, okay, I see how all these pieces are coming together. So I know most of these characters now. Um, mm-hmm. Great. Uh, there's also um, a Dragon Man. Who is this guy? He's, he's like an hanging android. He's-, he's a robot. Oh, mm-hmm. he is. He's a classic Fantastic Four character, isn't he, Chris? Yes. Yes, originally a villain, but uh, he was he had like a child's mind kind of like Hulk type character. But okay. then, uh, you know, he got smart and now he wears little uh, pince nez glasses. You know, that was the sort of same sort of situation. I feel like I'd seen Dragon Man before, but it definitely wasn't in this capacity. And so I thought I was just like thinking of somebody totally different. But that's that's nice. Um, yeah, I feel like he was in She-Hulk, but I know Awesome Andy was in She-Hulk too. I could be just confusing them because they're very yeah, similar. Yeah, they are. Um, so well, I think we've got our cast of characters pretty much rounded out. Uh, just to you know, clarify what you said, we are reading issues four through eight from when they sort of rebooted both of them at the same time. And so the Fantastic Four is out of the picture as far as this comic is concerned, although, like you said, we'll kind of get some hints. Uh, and this one kind of starts off with... Uh, Johnny Storm coming back? I, I guess Johnny Storm has recently come back at the very end of the last issue or so. Uh, no, uh, but he, it's like he, an he, old he, man version. Yeah, classic Johnny Storm's back, been back for a couple of years, actually. In the, in okay, the great. Well, not a couple of years, but he came back at the end of Hickman's run. Right. Uh, but yeah, this is like an old man version from the future who's like missing an eye. And he says, hey, Dr. Doom's going to uh, destroy the future. We have to go kill Dr. Doom right now um and i guess it's important for us to mention what's going on with ant-man right now because his daughter uh was just killed uh yeah she was killed for by dr doom she was killed i believe in uh avengers uh children's crusade children's crusade so if you're a not not very good book not very good uh Uh, unfortunate but it is uh also kind of what ant-man's going through right now he's like yeah let's go kill dr doom he's into it yeah (laughs) uh that was a weird thing because Young Avengers had Cassie Lang and Scott Lang was dead and she was trying mm-hmm. to avenge the death of her father. And then I think in so doing got herself killed, but her dad resurrected. It was weird. Yes. Uh, That's funny. So this first issue is kind of them like at the beginning trying to figure out if this Johnny Storm is even real. Like, do we believe what he says? Um, actually, I think at first everybody believed him. Medusa just kind of as a test said, what if you're not the real Johnny Storm? Just to see how he'd act. And he... <laughs> kind of blew up uh it was not great uh, but you know this whole johnny storm thing doesn't even really get settled in these four five issues that we're reading um but he's just kind of around they, they have to deal with him a little bit here and there but it doesn't really get settled uh whether or not he is the real johnny storm for the future so we'll have to settle that for another time uh instead this go ahead i have to say that's the next issue that deals with him going to the bowery yeah, there are so many great throwbacks throughout this entire thing, both in Matt Fraction's writing and in Mike Allred's art. Um, it is just really kind of a joy to read, especially after having recently read some of that old Fantastic Four stuff. It mm-hmm. feels like such an updated version of these old tropes in a, in a really fun way. Yeah, in a later issue, uh, they actually show up. Uh, Allred and uh, Fraction show up in the uh, microverse. Um, oh, is that? Wow. I missed that. All right. This is like, just an like, just like Stan and Jack at yep. the wedding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Um, so we've been talking about a lot of different things already. Uh, but I think the first issue, ab- above all of this other stuff that we've been talking about, is mainly She-Hulk on a date with uh, her old fling, Wyatt Wingfoot. Although I guess they were engaged at one point. That's what the book says, yeah. Yeah, this was uh, Johnny Storm's... What, his old roommate or whatever from the, the last books that we read? Yeah. Uh, and the car, car driving. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, he's got that out. fancy car from the last book. Yeah, the Ferrari. Um, but the thing is, the little Moloids really 
love Jen. Like, they are just in love with her, and they're like, we know what this is. She's going on a date. We can't let this be okay. We we need to find a way to sabotage it. Well, and so good, they go. They're so cute because the Moloids were in love with uh, with uh, Ben Grimm, the thing, and they called him the Ben in uh, Hickman's <laughs> run, and they love the Ben. Um, and then the Ben is gone, and now they love the Jen. Uh, <laughs> it's just really cute, and they're all in love. And then Bentley, who wants to become a supervillain like his uh, dad, the uh, the wizard, is like, I will mastermind this plot to break up their relationship to prove how good of a supervillain I am. <laughs> uh, it is like it feels almost kind of like a like a Bob's Burgers kind of uh, like, like a home movies kind of thing with the kids trying to sabotage something the grownups are doing. And it, I just I really enjoyed that whole main plot of the book. It felt very silly, especially because all their plots went wrong like oh we're gonna try and like create a fire on top of the building that they're in but it just turns into a little like light show uh we're gonna try and sabotage their dinner date by making the waiter do something crazy and the crazy thing the the waiter does is gives everyone their meal on the house which is just such a random thing yeah, I liked it when they summoned the, like, you know, uh, 50s era, you know, Jack Kirby monster, Gormu type guy. And then he, like, defeats himself, basically. <laughs> They're just like, whoa, I can't believe we're watching this. This is crazy. <laughs> and it ends up bringing them closer together, which is great. Um, and at the end of this issue, we get a weird little twist in that uh, Bentley is, like, getting encouragement about being a bad guy. And he's, like, lying in bed at night, and he's getting this encouragement from Medusa? What? Why is Medusa encouraging him to become a villain? Hmm. Questions. Very curious. Very curious. I do like Uh, the idea that, like, a part of the team is not uh, being fully uh, forthright, and one could be a villain. I do like that soap opera twist. I also love how Allred just draws Medusa's hair. Just straight. Yeah. It's great. Uh, yeah, the cover. It's, it's, of- it's a good reveal too, because like you see the like the little tendrils on the ground, and it's not immediately obvious what it is. And then like you turn the page, and it's like oh, it's Medusa. <laughs> I highly recommend, even if you aren't reading this, at least go and look through the covers uh, because they're really great. The fifth issue that we're coming up on uh, is uh, Medusa with her hair kind of wrapped around everybody, tangled up in it. It's really uh, it's really nice. Um, yeah, shout out also kind of... to uh, Laura Allreds for her. She's the colorist. Uh, Mike Allreds, mm-hmm. the uh, the uh, inker penciler. She does it, and they're like a team. They always do their art together, right? Yeah, yeah. she actually ends up taking over writing this book uh, near the end. Oh, so, great! I didn't know. Yeah. So, yeah, I really like. I don't know if it's in this issue or the next, but uh, when Scott Lang, I think it's in issue five, which we're getting to now. Uh, has the dream about Cassie, and it's like all gray, and he's just seeing her like on the the hill. Like, that's such an evocative image. And then when they are able to incorporate that into scenes, just like of him thinking about it without like a big thought bubble, I'm like, wow, this is really good. It is great. Yeah, it's such a smart way to save the thought bubble while still telling us exactly what's going on in a more visceral way. It's great. Um, But uh, yeah, the second issue, the fifth issue, uh, is uh, Medusa introducing her son to everybody. Uh, What's his name? Ahuna? Ahura. Ahura. Of her. Um, which I, you know, I know I've read some stuff with him uh, around there, but I, I gotta say, I don't know too much about this guy. He's just kind of like a shitty teenager who doesn't want to be there, I guess. He's not in the Inhumans TV series? No, he is not. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, uh, he, he wasn't around in the Paul Jenkins run, so he is out. Yeah, he is a fairly newer character, I think, and like probably would have had, had to have been created after that, right? Like mid 2000s? Or was he around before the Paul Jenkins run? Yeah, I think he was late 2000s when they were really, like, they kept putting in humans books on the shelves for no one. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, they, like, really were pushing them. Well, I think it's actually because they knew they didn't have the rights to the X-Men, and so they wanted the Inhumans to be, like, their movie property version, and so they had the Inhumans movie planned, which yeah. then got turned into a TV show, which <laughs> then turned into a canceled, and so, yeah. <laughs> uh, that didn't pan out the way they wanted I do still like the way they were uh, uh, created in, not created, but just uh, approached in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. with the Inhumans and everything. Uh, Got to give that show a chance, everybody. Give it a chance. <laughs> right. um, yeah, I mean, I think the Inhumans are a cool idea, but yeah. 
Yeah, but yeah, they're not the X Men. Come on, yeah, now. and they're they're really not the focus of the, this book very much. Medusa is here. I don't really remember why her son is here or what's going on with him, uh, but he is there. Yeah, uh, she has, I guess they're thinking about having him join the school or something. Oh, yeah, he's, he serves up Maximus the Mad later. Oh, mm-hmm. good, good for him. Um, we've got old man Johnny Storm, uh, J- old man John. They call him old John. Uh, who is going around the Bowery now looking for a place to rest, which, uh, like again, just such a great throwback. Uh, he did that in one of the old Fantastic Four issues. Uh, didn't Namor also like lose his memory and wake up in the Bowery and that yes. kind of thing? There are direct references to Fantastic Four number four, including that issue appearing in this issue. Uh, including, yeah, that's he goes to the Bowery and he's like, I'll blend in with the other derelicts here. <laughs> Yeah, he's using his old-timey language. He says it out loud in this issue instead of just thinking it, and they're like, what? (laughs) Um, Yeah, and then the the guy at the store, his beard catches on fire. My precious beard. I forgot (laughs) about that line until you mentioned it. It's a great line. Uh, And she puts out the fire with that issue of Fantastic Four. Oh, boy. Just in case you're like, "Uh, has he ever burned someone's beard off before? (laughs) Yes. Um, what else is going on? We've got uh, the Inhumans kind of show up for a little bit. They're hanging out. Um, Crystal, who is Medusa's sister, uh, I guess old girlfriend of the Human Torch. I don't really know what their situation is like right now. But Crystal has a daughter um, who can kind of maybe see things. And she's like, Medusa, what's going on with you? And Medusa is like, the fuck? Don't talk to your queen like that. What is this shit? <laughs> uh then we get, uh, oh, Miss Thang. We haven't really talked much about her. Darla, what's her last name? Darla, Darla Daring? Darla Daring, yeah. She's a Deering. rock star. Daring, Darla. Yeah. She's a rock star? She's, a, she's like a pop star. Got it like a, uh, a record contract at, what, 14 uh, Grammys or VMAs at 17. Those are wildly different things. I don't know why. I them. <laughs> um, but now she basically goes around with a big old uh, thing suit on, but her head is exposed. Uh, which is a pretty cool look, like uh, a woman with pink hair with a thing body uh, as part of the team. I think she was in uh, the Fantastic Four issues we did a while back. With Walt Simonson? I want to say Simonson. she was. The image yeah. looks very familiar. Yeah. Really? Huh. Maybe. Was there a girl uh, in the thing costume, or was it Ben in the thing costume? I know the costume yes. was there, because Ben had, had, had gone back to being a human, right? But he still wore a thing costume? Maybe that's yeah, what I, I think. I think it was yeah. the Godzilla issue we did uh, where Ben was wearing the thing costume that that Darla is wearing. Yeah, that's great. Um, so it was in the 70s. There's a lot of references to like continuity that some of it is as obvious as Fantastic Four number four, where they literally are like, this is what we're referencing. But yeah, Darla during like having the uniform of the thing. And then later we'll spoil it when we get to it. Yeah. Uh, referencing a TV show. <laughs> Oh, I don't. I'm not sure I caught that. Um, Oh, yeah. So um, (laughs) she, like I said, her head is exposed. And so she's looking for some sort of a headgear that she can wear into battle. And there's a fun little uh, uh, montage of her trying that stuff. And then we find out that Dragon Man has created a nice little, uh, almost like an astronaut's kind of helmet to go on top of her uh, suit. It's pretty nice. I think it fits pretty well. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's when they find out that Human Torch has gone crazy. He's burning everything down, so they got to go save that. Stop it up. Um, we come to my favorite panel of the my favorite panel of this book, which uh-huh. is uh, Ant Man asking the kids for help, but he busts in on uh, is it Willie Lumpkin or Wally Lumpkin? Oh um, yeah, <laughs> uh, Willie Lumpkin, Wally Lumpkin. Uh, he's teaching a class, and he's got he's got a line across the chalkboard, and one on one half says birds. And one half says bees. And I love, <laughs> I just love the idea of him teaching the Uhari and, and the Moloids about the birds and the bees. It cracks me up to no end. Um, he looks like, he looks like old Stan Lee. It's just really funny. It's cute. Stan Lee, uh, of course, played him in the Fantastic Four movie in 2005. Uh, I, I never saw that. I've never seen a single Fantastic Four movie. I have zero interest in it. One I know of them was on too. FX this morning. You missed it. It was on at 8.30 uh, this morning. What did you say? I missed it? Really? <laughs> was it Was it Fantastic Four? Yeah, yeah it was a 2015 one with uh, with Killmonger. Yep. Um, so uh, it is Willie Lumpkin, uh, who was like an old newspaper comic strip character. And uh, wow. All right. Uh, anyways. Um, I love that panel. Is, 
<laughs> so I'm going to spoil something that happens a little bit later in the book uh, that happened kind of out of nowhere, I thought. But then this makes me realize, oh, OK, this makes a little bit more sense. Uh, one of the Moloids uh, talks to his like brother Moloids and says, hey, you know what? I think I want to be trans now. I'm going to become a woman. And I was like, oh, that's very much out of nowhere. But they're all super supportive. And they go, OK, we still love you. And it's just like, okay, from the rest of the book forward, this Moloid is wearing a dress. And I was like, well, that's, you know, great. Kind of out of nowhere. But this now is like, okay, almost a little bit of foreshadowing that the kids are being taught about it. And like, which is which? Because they're just like little, like, they don't know any better right now. So to learn that there's something different and get a choice, I thought that's pretty cool. That is cool. I love that page when the the Moloid decides that he's, he's like... Brothers, is it okay you now have a sister? I'm like, yeah, totally. Um, I think that one page on its own is like a full story in and of itself. Yeah. It just like tells you everything you need to know about these people. And then it's like, oh, resolution, great, we're happy. When they all yeah, have they're not stuff. that hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and they all have these like um, kind of Fantastic Four type outfits, although they're white, um, which is what the Fantastic Four was wearing at the time. And uh, Tong is her name, and she wears a dress over that outfit from henceforth. And another thing I really love about All Red's art is, like, costuming. He's really good mm-hmm. at, like, putting details and costumes over just standard costumes. And so I think that's yeah. a really, like, nice art touch that how Tong always wears that dress. It's really mm-hmm. it's really well done. It's really nice. I love in, uh, ish, I think it's the next issue, but to go back to Tong's story, because I don't, I mean, we don't have to talk about it too much more. But when uh, Bentley meets uh, Tong again and is just like, oh, you're a girl now. That's cool. Yeah. And just just has this big, like, he's, he's missing a tooth because he's like nine years old. He looks like the kid from the Iron Giant. And I'm just like, even this kid who's supposed to be the bad guy is like, He's not bad in this way. <laughs> yeah, he's a bad. He's bad in a very different way. Um, yeah, it's, he does look like the kid from Iron Giant. I didn't put that together, <laughs> but he really does. Oh, Bentley, um, you piece of shit. Um, all right, so <laughs> we've got. Um, hey, God, by that's the end such of this- a good idea. I'm gonna write that to Matt Fraction right now and <laughs> let him <laughs> incorporate some sort of Doctor Doom robot. Yes, those Doom bots uh, are fun. So uh, everybody goes to save the uh, or stop the human torch. Uh, it doesn't really go super well. There's like a picture, a Daily Bugle, uh, the headline, WTFF. Oh, boy. Well, because the, uh, the Uhari summon a giant undersea water creature to put him out. <laughs> and then they just high five each other because they don't talk. They're all silent. And I'm like, that's my second favorite panel. And then like nodding <laughs> at each other like we got a plan. And like, then the next page, this. giant monster. And then final panel, high five. And I'm like, yeah, good job, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I like that uh, the, the Daily Bugle in the 2010s has just fully embraced being, which which uh, New York the, paper the, is the, the one that just in, in exclusively writes in puns. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. The Post with the full page. It's now it's kind of like tabloid size now. It, it really is. It is the uh, just love child of tabloid news and. Um, Important things. I don't know. <laughs> Baxter uh, Building, Bumblers, Burn, Bowery. Yeah, it's that's a theater. Horrible. That's a theater kid. Uh, tongue twister. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, meanwhile, while this is going on, Alex Power, I guess, has just decided to go and do his own thing. Scott's a little bit upset about this because he's supposed to be in charge of the kids, but Alex is eighteen. He can do what he wants, and he decides to go visit Doctor Doom. What? Uh, what is this all about? Uh, and then also, poor little Bentley, that shitty little kid, uh, at the end of this issue, gets kidnapped by his pa, the wizard, and Medusa, and Blastar? Was that Blastar? Yep, it is Blastar. Didn't see him, wait, didn't we see him die just a few years earlier? In yeah. Annihilation Conquest. Yeah, yeah, yeah I wanted some kind of throwaway being like, that's not really Blastar. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. Um... So on to the next issue. Like, I think all, this... all, that's all I need is one like author's note that's like, yeah, this isn't real Blastar. This is a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so on to issue six. I think issue number six was my favorite by far. Uh, it starts with Dragon Man realizing that Bentley is nowhere to be found. And we get one of those great sort of cutaway panels of the whole uh headquarters with him going around and all the rooms are labeled and it's like okay these are the people who are currently in this room kind of getting a tally but no bentley anywhere to be found 
But I love those panels. You would just always get those mm-hmm. little things in the old comics. And they're great for the super fans of like, hey, yeah, I've got this issue. It has like the whole schematics of the whole building. So if you guys want to come come over to my place and play Fantastic Four, we'll know exactly where everything is. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, I, oh, I, by the I, way, do you guys want to come over to my house and play Fantastic Four later? I'll play FF with you. Future cool. Foundation. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> uh, what were you going to say, Vince? No, I just, I mean, the thing is, is, what would infuriate me is if, if then I looked back at the book and like, this doesn't make any sense with the architecture that was laid out in FF <laughs> issue six. Like, She Hulk's room is not there. And there's no way that the weird armory is two floors above. Like, that would bother me. But, um, nope. <laughs> oh my God. All right. All right. But did you actually do that? Did it bother you? I didn't actually look enough. Um, so you're see. saying it might bother if, you if I was a kid, if I all was right, a kid right. who like loved these things. But I love this page. This is this is my third favorite page of this book. Um, right. Third. Wow. You got. You, do you have I, a whole ranking? A well, I kept making. List? I kept. You know, because we're we're doing this new thing where we make our favorite panel. We we name our favorite panel of the book, and I just keep like, well, what about this one? Well, what about this one? Well, what about this one? And then I realized like all my notes were like that, and I was like, ah, oh, okay. Well. <laughs> Fract- uh, uh, all red makes good art or at least art that really speaks to me i really like it yeah great yeah I, it really speaks to me as well and i think he and matt fraction have like that perfect pairing of old timey and modern at the same time it's right. uh yeah it's great uh but this, well, it's, it's, a good, it's a good fit go for the book too because it's yeah. like retro futurism like mm-hmm. that's the whole yeah you know conceit of fantastic four in 2013 is that like, yeah, we know this is kind of old-timey super science. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, Yesterday's tomorrow. Oh, God, it's so good. Uh, so this issue is mainly about Darla Deering and how she is also still a pop star, doing her thing and, like, doing shows. And the Yancey Street Gang, who are the uh, just, like, uh, foes of the thing, like, sort of friendly rivals of the thing, have taken it upon themselves to say, hey, you're not the thing. You can't, like, just be Miss Thing all of a sudden. You're not the real thing. And so we're going to, like, just get all over you and ruin your life. And they hack into her phone and post those pictures of her trying out new helmets. They buy out all the tickets to her concert so that it's just them, and they're, like, throwing shit at her from the audience. They're all putting... uh, thing masks on at the same time and i think that is my favorite panel when they uh not the one where they necessarily reveal themselves to all have thing masks but where they start like crawling onto the stage after her Mm -hmm. was just like this crazy surreal even though it was also on the cover it's just like what the fuck is this this is great so so does the yancey street gang predate this book the like Yancey a, Street Gang is from the very beginning. Like really? they have okay. literally always been just uh, constant rivals to the thing that he would usually joke about. Mainly, I'm like, "Oh, the old yeah. Yancey Street Gang always pulling my chain" or something like that. But then every once in a while, they would actually be a thing. Um, yeah, because like earlier in the issues we didn't read, they like pull pranks on him where they they put they they pull pranks on him and then put him on YouTube. Uh, it's just funny things. Yeah. It is there's, real. there's a bad uh, Mark Wade retcon that says that there is no Yancey Street Gang and that it was all the Human Torch. Do it like, like a, pretending to be the Yancey Street Gang the whole time. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. which doesn't make any sense. No, that's not the, a retcon of the entire thing. I think it's just a retcon of the pies, the cream pies that they would send him that right. would pop into his face. Yes. Just that. Aspect. Like at least some of the pranks were actually Johnny. That's, I, I guess, more acceptable. But yeah, the Anti Street Gang goes back to like Stan and Jack. It was, again, just like Aunt Petunia. It was like 90% of it was the thing talking about it, being like, yeah. back on Yancey Street, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they've, uh, they've just been one of those fun little things. Um, meanwhile, everybody else discovers that, uh oh, Medusa's also gone, and we found some of her hairs, and something's going on, and. Uh Uh-oh, our whole building has just been transported to the negative zone. Uh Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. That's pretty much anything else important happened in this issue? Oh, they do have a sit-down with the Yancey Street gang where uh, uh, Ant-Man says, Hey, uh, you guys want to try and hack my teammate? I'm going to hack into y'all even better. And uh, listen, she's not the thing. You're right, but she is also tough, and she's her own thing. And I'm not Reed Richards, you can see, because I just hacked you. So, uh, you know, you two settle things uh, or just, like, 
talk to each other as roughly as you can and uh, create a new relationship. And yeah. that's it. I liked uh, that his solution, he's like, I knew I could never hack you like uh, through computer means, so I just shrunk down really small and looked over your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. Oh, yeah, he was also on uh, uh, Darla Deering's Miss Thangs. I don't know why I say her real name when Miss Thang is just such a great name. It's Miss uh, Thing, but I like to call her Miss Thang. Well, I know, yeah. <laughs> it is. We should clarify, yes. Miss Thing is her name, but yeah, Miss Thang. How can you not say Miss Thang every time you say it? Uh, she's given this show and Ant-Man's like on her shoulder. So far, I gotta tell you, they have not really fought, they have not fought a single supervillain. We've had some supervillains <laughs> kidnap members of the team, yes, but in the first three issues, nobody has fought a supervillain. They are just dealing with being people, uh, and it is great so far. Yeah, I agree, that's a real problem. D- it's a, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, well, cause like, cause this issue has like five different subplots going on, um, and the next issue feels kind of slight because it is mostly just fights. Yeah, um, it is a fight. Yeah. yeah. Which which I, I like it, though. Uh, I like the uh, the part where, you know, Scott Lang... And again, it's such a... You know, because they expect you to read this in trade, basically. But they don't do, like, a 1970s style uh, where he's like, okay, kids, get ready for battle. And they're like, really? Battle? Aren't you worried we'll die? Yeah. <laughs> And he just uh, he has, like, a, a memory, not even a memory. Like, he literally, instead of just Cassie being up on that hill, like, with it all gray, he sees, like, ten kids up there. And he's just like, well, uh, you have to do it. So, <laughs> you know, I, this just made me think of that. For a cast of, like, what, 20 characters that this book has, it manages to balance them all pretty well, considering how many subplots there are going on. How many things are just kind of like, okay, we're going to keep mentioning this even though we're going to re- resolve it later. I think it did a pretty good job of like not really confusing me. And I just jumped right in with this issue, with that issue four. Um, yeah, kudos to, to Fraction and, yeah. and All Red. Both, I both, think it's, yeah. it's smart to pace it like it's a TV show. Mm-hmm. So like to have an issue that like very... You know, like, it's like a lost episode about, you know, one of the characters where you're like, oh, that guy? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Where the main, like, Doom stuff and Johnny and all of this, like, this is obviously your big ending of the season. And, like, you don't move that forward, but you you pay off all these little subplots with the characters. And Mm -hmm. since it makes you like the characters, you're fine with it, you know? Yeah. It worked out great. Uh, Medusa, we find out, has been brainwashed by the wizard. Not brainwashed, but it's like under some sort of his mind control. Uh, and he's got this complex to where he wants to kidnap his uh, his clone and be like a classic, uh, what does he say, a heter- heteronormative nuclear family or something to that extent. Um and he wants Medusa to be his wife. He's got Blaster to be the uncle. And he's kind of like <laughs> gone crazy. And he says, hey, this boy needs to have a good classic upbringing. And that's it. And uh, so he is just trying to kidnap his boy and make him a family. Which is, you know, almost kind of admirable. Uh, if it wasn't so damn wrong. Uh, and uh, we get a, yeah, a great big fight. I, w- uh, I wish we could have seen classic Frightful Four characters like the, the Sandman or the Trapster. You know, and it is. There was another mention to uh, the Trapster, aka Paste Pot Pete, when um, the Yank St- Yancey Street Gang they show up. They're talking to uh, some reporter or whatever, and he says, "Hey, are you the the Yankee Yancey Street Gang?" And they say, "Nah, we're the fight, frightful four, but we lost Paste Pot Pete or something like that." that was great, um, but uh, out of nowhere to save the day, in comes Bentley. Oh, shitty little Bentley. You're not so shitty after all. Oh, good kid. Uh, he puts uh, some device that he created over Blastar and just sends him out into outer space. Uh, good for you, Bentley. You are smart. Um, you know, talking about the Frightful Four, it just reminded me that the Wizard and Medusa were the, the very first uh, Frightful Four together. Yep, they were, the it was trapster. Sandman and the Trapster. Yeah, that's why he chose her for the, the new mom. Very nice. I love Very the nice. art. I keep going the art, but like the, the images of like, it's either the veins in her eyes or her hair that says like, he is in my head. And mm-hmm. then 
And then Ant Man's real small, trying to like stop Medusa, <sighs> and like the, the small little hairs on her on her face are like trapping him on her body, like suffocating him. It's just really <laughs> cool. I love it. It is so cool. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Yeah, I yeah. love that when her eyelashes like knock him over, and he's like, "Oh, come <laughs> on." <laughs> Uh, but uh, they handily defeat the villains. Everyone's uh, back to normal. It's good stuff. And um, we find out that Alex Power has gone to Latveria to not kill Dr. Doom, but to tell Dr. Doom all about their plan to end Doom. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. What, what a narc. What a damn narc. Um, so I probably should also state at this point, I don't think, I think we missed it was that John storm came back saying that doom, the annihilating conqueror was going to destroy them, which oh, is doom okay. mixed with annihilus and Kang, the conqueror, um, yes. they all f- three fused together into one being, um, that's what he's claiming has happened. Yeah, da- uh, Doom the Annihilating Conqueror is going to Doom happen. the Annihilating Conqueror. That's a pretty good name. Good mix of three names that are very yeah. similar. Which you, I kind of forgot about until the first page of issue eight, where I'm like, oh yeah. yeah. I I had actually completely forgotten about this as well because he just shows up on top of the Fantastic Four. Well, the whole Fantastic Four tower just comes back to from the, um, from the negative zone or the, the negative zone, and this time Annihilus is on top, and he's like, ah, it worked. And you do, oh, I could totally miss this the first time around, but you see him kind of blasting off off of the tower in the background while mm-hmm. everyone else is celebrating, like, yay, we're back, hooray, and they're on the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, and this issue is almost like a lot of cleanup about everything. Uh, they have a lot of issues with um, Medusa and how she was just mind-controlled, and it's like something that's, I don't know, just part of her, like, hey, she's particularly susceptible to it. Yeah, and, I do like the uh, She-Hulk's like, fool me once, like, I'm not letting yeah, you around like, the kids listen, anymore. You, yeah, you can't be around them. Like, this could happen again. This is not good. Uh, that doesn't really get super revol- resolved because other more important things come up. Okay, so Miss Thing also has a new costume. Not really a new costume, but she has a new way of putting it on. It's two rings, uh, which she slams together, and uh, she says, Thing, ring, do your thing! Which uh, is great. That's a, is that a callback to the old TV show? Yeah. Yes, that's a callback to, I think it was the late 70s TV show that The Thing was in, where he had a magic ring that made him The Thing. That's great. I, you know, I, I'd never seen that, but it did really remind me, for whatever reason, of Gizmo Duck and how he could just like, put on... I don't Blathering, know, maybe Blather Skites. Maybe I was just thinking of... Uh, uh, wait, Blathering Blather Skites? I thought it was Blather Smites. Uh, you're we're you're going to argue with up. me from four-year-old me, so um, you can be right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, you're Blather Skites. Is that what you said? Yeah. Nah, damn it. I'm I was wrong. right, four-year-old Vince, for the <laughs> win. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nailed it. They also have uh, Herbie is a character, uh, not really a character, just a robot that uh, supervises over her sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I love the and Doom Herbies. Another- yeah, that's another uh, 70s cartoon uh, character where for, I think it was because the Human Torch, they were considering a live action show. So they're like, well, we'll give you this horrible robot, Herbie. Well, the other rumor was is that they didn't want kids lighting themselves on fire. So That they... was the rumor, but it was untrue. Okay. <laughs> um, you kids yeah. in the 70s were not that stupid. Yeah. God. I'm the Human Torch. I should... <laughs> Uh, I've got a new uh, superhero, Tide Pod Man. Uh, it's going to be great. Uh, all right. So uh, enough of eating Tide Pods. Please don't do that, kids. Listen to the show. <laughs> do kids listen to this show? Uh, we, should, we should maybe say fuck less if kids listen to this show. Um, oh, if you if you listen to the show, I would imagine you listen to the show if you're hearing this. Uh, you know, a quick plug for us in general. We are just three dudes sitting at a desk uh, talking at microphones. If you want us to try some new stuff, uh, tell us to do it. That's why we're talking about crisis. Somebody said, hey, try this. So we're trying it. Always down to try new stuff. Hit us up. Yep. Uh, we love so, our fans. So we basically wrapped up this issue. It ends with uh, yeah, Doom. So. Doom is very mean to Alex Power, which is not surprising if you know anything mm-hmm. about Dr. Doom. It smacks him? Oh, so mean. You don't tell me what to do. I do love how Laveria is colored in this book. But mm-hmm. I love it. Dragon Man's, uh, I think, uh, She-Hulk, we got in a fight with that. Dragon Man is made muffins, and he's got an apron on that says, Kiss the Dragon Man. <laughs> yeah, that's great. 
Um, we've got um, Alex Power comes back home, right? Mm-hmm. But now and, he's a spy. But now he's a spy. We've got uh, him and uh, Bentley as well. And the Moloids are like, hey, can we trust y'all? Are you guys good guys right now? Like, what's going on? They've got doubts. Uh, we've got, um, you know, She-Hulk and Medusa. They have their fight, which is interrupted by... What is it interrupted by? Oh, we got a call from Dragon Man. We got The kids are fighting now. we got to go ahead and talk to them. Yeah. Uh, ben, Bentley is, like, filming, filming a short film. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we've got uh, the sort of like uh, 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 our little teaser for the next issues is Doctor Doom talking to both Annihilus and Kang. Although it's, you know, Kang is a character from the future, but it's a younger version of Kang before he was Kang. And so he says, uh, you know what, call me Kid Immortus. And he's with the uh, lady. He says, no, 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 no. Is that Ravona? Yeah. Yeah, Ravona. Ravona. Uh, I'm not sure. Where's she from? I'm not sure that- She's always been Kang's, uh, like, uh, Mr. Freeze and Nora kind of thing, where it's like, okay. she's always uh, been fridged for the most part. Uh, she's, in, she's in Lego Marvel. That's why I recognize her. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, I do like Kang's outfit here. He almost looks a little vision-y. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. Well, that's, I mean, that's young Kang, right? From Young Avengers. Yeah. Oh, when he Because yeah. uh, Young Avengers had, what was he? They thought he was, uh, like, Young Tony, like a young Tony Stark or like Iron Man, and they ended up being uh, Kang. Yeah, like uh, so we've seen Kang throughout a lot of points in his uh, his life. Mm-hmm. I, I think it might be fun to read a um, a Kang from his perspective, from the youngest Kang we know up until the oldest. Whoa, mm-hmm. that'd be crazy. Uh, anyways, the, so that's. Uh, that's pretty much the end of it. That last issue was a little bit weird because, yeah, just a lot of cleanup of everything and then setting up the next stuff. But uh, it's still, like, even these one one single issues that aren't necessarily part of an arc but just kind of tell their own little stories. Uh, yeah, all of this thing, I really liked it. Um, Chris, I don't think we talked about your favorite panel. Do you have a favorite panel for this one? Uh, I don't know. There's, I have a couple. Uh, the one with uh, where he's thinking about all the kids being dead, which is a very like sad moment. I was like, that's that yeah. was really affecting to me. Where I was like, wow, okay. I was not expecting that. Uh, okay, I thought you were gonna. Okay, good, you're good. I I thought you were gonna say you really liked him thinking about dead kids. <laughs> uh, but but yeah. but my favorite is uh what I referenced in uh my opening quote where. It's a reference to Fantastic Four number four, uh, and it's a reference to the Bowery and how it's now not the like you know downtrodden neighborhood it was in like 1963 or whatever 1962 or a long time ago, uh, where it's like this is like an immigrant community that like Johnny's like I'll blend in down here because it's going to be like all like down on their luck you know local. Uh, first generation immigrants and then he goes there in 2013 and it's like you know fancy hipsters with their beards yeah that was really i really uh, that's when i was like instantly on board i was already on board because i already like these two guys uh writing and making this book but yeah this uh really i was on on top of it uh great stuff um Vince, you got anything else to say about this? I really like it. I don't think it comes together as well as I'd want it to. Like, there's something missing about this book, but I really do like it. I've actually just, like, blasted ahead. I'm, like, on issue 12 now. Um, oh, wow. Re- I, I really like this. I, I, I've read this book, and I've lost momentum every time. Um, this time, I think I'm really pushing through, though. I, re- I really like it. Knowing Knowing where all the characters came from from Hickman's run makes this a lot easier for me. Um, mm-hmm. But man, I, I I really like it, and I'm excited to just kind of see see it where it ends out. I'm kind of troubled because Fraction and All Red stopped um, Fraction stops uh, scripting it after issue 11. So the last five issues of it um, are written by Laura All Red with uh, with like yeah. kind of plot by him, which is I, I'm always kind of nervous about that, mostly because I remember Mark Miller uh, Mark Millar uh, abandoned his fantastic four run with like two or three issues left and it was just like story by mark millar written by some other dude you've never heard of um and they huh? and i'm like did 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 fraction lose interest in this did he just like ah, well, fuck this book like so I, I was reading something about how uh, apparently he had like 
I don't know, issues with uh, editorial and he left. I I don't remember exactly where I read it or what it was, but it was something about because he left both Fantastic Four books at about the same time, I think. OK, right. Um, yeah, yeah I don't really have more details on that, though. I mean, they were going to reboot them anyway, and then those reboots didn't last very long, and then they didn't reboot Fantastic Four after that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's one more reboot in 20, what, 13 or 2014? One? Yeah, a Fantastic Four. Future Foundation's gone. Mm-hmm. And then that lasts like 10 or 11 issues, and then it's like, well, we're done with this. Yeah. Yeah. I think, And then after that, there was that big Secret Wars event uh, that Hickman wrote, which was... Um, yeah. Pretty much him doing like the Fantastic Four is really important, but also sending them off and like they're going to be out of the picture for a little while. Yeah, I only think so. like just now the Fantastic Four is kind of coming back into the Marvel Universe. They come I'm back really in sure. August with Dan Slott. Yeah. Oh, yeah. great. So, um, but yeah, I, I think this is a really good book. I do think it it it's it's a little unfair because like X Men is the same way, you know, like there's no. There's no one character you can really sink your teeth into and be like, mm-hmm. this is my guy, you know, like. X Factor, you know, another book from a little before this era that I really love. Like Madrox is your guy. Like he's mm-hmm. the he's the main one. And yeah, there's like 15 more characters, but it's like it always comes comes back to him eventually, you know, even if an issue or two gets away from him, he's the main character. Like Scott yeah. Lang really isn't that for FF and I do think that kind of hurts it cuz even with the Fantastic 4 like I really like the thing. Like, he's just cool. <laughs> and so there's not... I like She-Hulk a lot, but she kind of disappears after she has her date issue, which was really good. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I kind of yeah. wish it was about She-Hulk or Darla Deering or somebody, but since it's such a true team book, there's mm-hmm. not really any focus is my yeah, one I th- criticism. I think that makes sense because, Vince, I know you tend to not enjoy team books as much as solo books because you like having somebody to focus on a little bit more. Uh, and I think for me, I I don't know, I guess that's less important to me because for me, I really liked the switching back and forth and each issue is sort of centered on somebody different. Um, I appreciated that. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, this one was kind of flew in the face of that. Maybe I think the first two times I read it, I was expecting it to be a Scott Lang book, um, mm-hmm. which it's not. And it's not because he is ex- he is explicitly stated as being the leader of the right. whole thing, right? Yeah, even though he kind of doesn't feel like it most of the time. No, I'm I'm all about the Moloids and the in the Uhari. <laughs> like though they carry this book for me. I love them so much. Um, yeah, the Moloids are great. Even though at, at a few times their love for She Hulk started to get a little bit creepy. Uh, but you know, at the end, I was like, okay, they're just cute little kids. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah, that's okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, overall, I really enjoyed it. Anybody got any last words about Fantastic Four or FF? No, it's a, it's a, it's a good little run. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm in a internet community. They're like, what are some obscure Marvel runs that are really good that, cause they have unlimited. And I'm like, FF, it's 16 issues. Just go knock it out. Um, yeah, it's good. I feel like anything that Mike Allred draws ends up being like obscurely great because it's got such a classic old timey style to it that most modern fans just aren't into it. You know yeah. what I mean? I yeah. love it. I mean, I, I, I don't think it's as good as ecstatics and I, uh, what else, what could be as good as ecstatics? That's true. Come on. Ecstatics. Yeah. I really like, and I think like his art sensibilities are good in this one, but it has a lot of what he was already doing in I zombie before this. Um, there's a lot okay. of like, like with like the reporters like taking pictures of them and stuff. Like that's mm-hmm. that's all in iZombie also, um, which mm-hmm. is a TV show very successful. I'm sure Mike is making some money off of that. So yeah. good for him. And is good he still him. doing Silver Surfer, or is that over? You know, he was as of a year or two ago, uh, but I think it might be over now. Okay, uh, I'm not positive. I need to read um, that. It's pretty cool. I think uh, we read one issue cool for it. The uh, yeah. best Eisner short story or something. Yeah. The Mobius yeah. issue, yeah. The Mobius, yeah, that was great. Um, all right, so let's move on to uh, Crisis. Yeah, Crisis time. All right, issue four. I, so in issue three, I remember I liked that one uh, a little bit more. It was, like, kind of coming around. Uh, issue four for Crisis started out with a nice, touching, emotional scene for two char- between two characters that I know. Uh, we got I was Back like, Girl. finally, it's finally starting to get on yeah. track. We got Batgirl yeah. and Supergirl talking about They're the talking. 
but really they're just kind of sad about the end of the world and nothing happens. And then, boy, the whole middle of this book, I <laughs> I don't know, man. We introduced, like, three new characters, maybe? Constantine uh, was here. Okay, so let's let's go back, though, to the Batgirl and Supergirl scene. Okay, yes, go ahead. Because I ahead. think it's, Great. like, let's focus. It's, it's the best example of what I like about this book or maybe what I want more out of this book and what mm-hmm. is wrong with this book in my head. Okay. So characters actually doing charactery things, living mm-hmm. in this world, like processing the events that are happening. Whereas a lot of what's happening in this book is just like, Oh, everything's turning to white. Oh no, we've got to stop it. But like, you don't, there's shadow monsters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've, we've had now four issues where we haven't had much like movement on the, well, what is this? (laughs) And how does it affect us? We've just seen a lot of universes disappear. And so, like, I don't feel like the needle's really been moved from the last three issues yeah. at all. Well, I yeah, I don't feel like there's – that we know why this is happening, nor do we have any sort of frame of reference for how can we stop it. Uh, and so it's just like, oh, okay, four more issues. This is just – yeah, it's happening. It's just happening and that's it. Yeah, which, like, oppositely, like, I like this scene and the, the stuff I liked about the, the Secret Wars book that ended the Marvel Universe uh, by, by Hickman, the side stuff, like, there was a Miss Marvel book where there, she's just with her family, like, in, like, kind of, you know, like a, like a high school, you know, that's been set up with cots. And, like, just with her friends on their final day before they think the world's going to end. Like, that's a really good story. And I think, like, the way Miles Morales handled it, like, that was also, like, interesting to me. Like, Mm -hmm. seeing the, like, the real character's, like, perspective on these events is what I like more of these events because they're like, this is just not going to happen. And we're we're not good. And then, like, even, like, Supergirl's, like, saving people. Like, and people are like, I'm about to die. This whole universe is going. Like, why the hell are you even bothering to save me? And mm-hmm. Supergirl's like, because I have to. And, like, I really like that. Like, that's good. That's really good. And then it's just like, I don't even fucking care. Yeah, um, well, it's yeah. like three people from different universes and their world. I don't know. I didn't Who realize are, Constantine was around in 84 or 85, though. I have um, to be in this, in this book. Which, I don't, I don't even remember him in this Constantine book. Was, was Constantine was immediately after the uh, Batgirl and Supergirl scene. So he's, like, in page three or four of this. He's the one. Oh, it was like for a yeah, real quick. But Constantine, and he's talking about like, oh, don't worry about swamp thing. Oh, I guess especially the swamp thing. Yes, especially to him. And I'm like, <laughs> is Constantine is still a swamp thing villain at this point? I'm not exactly sure about his like origin oh, no. origins. Well, he's not a villain at this point, but yes, he's a swamp thing character. Yeah, uh, still smoking, it's... still drinking. It's it's John <laughs> Constantine. He never changed. Never changed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so of all these characters, the only one that seems to be important is this Pariah guy. Is that his name? Yeah, yeah. he looks that? like Adam yeah. Warlock. With yeah, he does look costume. a little bit like Adam Warlock. He's, uh, got, he's got the kind of curly hair with like a lightning the, bolt on his forehead and dark eyeshadow as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's very much Adam Warlock. Uh, and he, I don't know, after his universe dies or whatever, Monitor saves him and says. Hey, man, I took you, I brought you back here to my home where I'm watching the world die. And I've been kind of working hard to keep that from happening, but I'm also dying a little bit. So, look, you're going to be important. You're going to take uh, charge of all this. And uh, listen, my kind of adopted daughter, she's going to show up and kill me in a second. And oh, here she is. All right, peace, dude. You're no, in but let now. that Bye. happen. It's going to be cool. It's cool. Don't worry about yeah, that. Just, just let it happen. <laughs> and. Like, I would say for a guy who's all-knowing and who's, like, passing some knowledge on, like, pass some knowledge on, man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> need to know, know basis. Need to, I guess so. I feel like Pariah needs to know. I don't really know who Pariah is, but I know that he needs to know because Monitor told me that he needs to know, but that's all that he told me. He keeps he, uh, keep, uh, he keeps seeing universes die, though. Like, that's, like, his, like, curse. All he's, but that's all he's done for four issues, and then he dies. Uh, the, no, 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 Pariah's deal. That's Pariah's oh, deal. Oh, sorry, sorry. Pariah just was like, why is this happening? Why do I keep seeing universes die? And then he finally meets the Monitor, who's like... Oh yeah, I saved you. You're gonna be very important. It's like fuck. I'm gonna see another universe uh, die. I know that's gonna happen. Uh, <laughs> the monitor does get killed by. Uh, remember his uh, his adopted daughter Harbinger. Uh, yeah, I forget Lila. what her real name is. Lila. Great. Uh, she uh, has been brainwashed by whoever Monitor's bad guy is. Do we know who it is? The shadow. Dude guy. in shadows. Dude in yeah, shadows. Shadow guy. Uh, and. 
he dies. He just straight up dies. She also gets kind of knocked away. Maybe dead, maybe not. I don't know. But they do tell us on the cover that Monitor dies in this issue. Uh, I thought, you know, I'm kind of used to, like, modern comics that say someone will die. But then nobody dies. It doesn't matter. But he actually dies. Um, so maybe that was a little bit surprising. I don't know. I don't know and why. Earth uh, one and two. Well, yeah, the there's like some, there's some other stuff where like Firestorm goes and hangs out with King Arthur. Um, um, oh, I did like Red Tornado was in this issue also for a little bit. Um, he, I've gotten to like him a lot because he played a pretty big role in the um, uh, uh, the Young Justice TV show that I really liked, the okay. cartoon. Really, he's he's, he's, like, he's, a, he's a second rate vision to me. He is pretty much like a second rate vision, but uh, I got to tell you, after Young Justice, Vision might be a second rate tornado. That's all. I'm no. Saying. Wrong. Whoa, look, shots look, fired. Man. you got to watch yeah. uh, Young Justice, and we can talk about it. Look, look, we had to sacrifice half the people on Earth to try to protect that robot for an hour. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't have done right. that. For Red Tornado, they would have been like, here you go, Thanos. You can kill this guy. Uh, I think that's... I think you're accurate. You're right. <laughs> but um, I, don't, I think it was less about saving Vision and more about keeping the power out of Thanos' hands. Uh, and you no, know, I think no, it's because Vision is great, and they all knew Vision was great. So, like, we got to protect this guy. He's the best of us. I do think that says something about Crisis on Infinite Earths, in that we are talking about the Vision and the Avengers right now, because so far this book, uh, like, you know, I know it's going to be important. I know it's going to get there. Uh, but right now, I'm still. I, th- I thought I was coming around to it, but boy, yeah, this it, one uh, went right back or just took a step back for me. You know, Infinity Gauntlet and Infinity War both do such a good job of being like, you know, I kind of hope Thanos doesn't win and Magus doesn't win. But on the other hand, they are charismatic, cool guys. And I know who they are. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Whereas I still don't really know. Like, there is no villain in this book right now. Who is the shadow guy? There is no, like, there's no shadow guy. There is a shadow guy. We don't know who it is. Uh, And the only person who knew anything about anything died without telling anybody. And so mm-hmm. I'm excited to see what happens in issue five. Uh, anybody got anything else to say about Crisis? Great. No. I think... Mm. Uh, There's uh, a dinosaur Perez's, in next issue. George oh, Perez's is art still good. The art is still really beautiful. I think for s- juggling so many different types of characters, they are really distinct enough that you're like, who is this guy? Why do I... I don't care about him. I don't care about this. Who is she? Um, and so, you know, thank you, George Perez, for telling me, uh, keeping track of who I don't care about. Thank you. Uh, okay. Time to end the show before we hate on this book too much. Uh, I promise, hopefully we'll start loving Crisis. I shouldn't promise. What if it's bad? We'll get there. Um, but I think that is the end of the show. Oh, what are we doing next time? Oh, great. Well, 4th of July is coming up. Very exciting. Time to celebrate America, because America's the best country. We're going to take over the world. We're going to take over Earth, and America's going to be rich. Mark my words. I tell you, America's going to be great. Uh, Prez. Talking about the president. Not, no, don't worry, not that guy. The real president, Prez. You remember we talked about him a while back? When did we talk about him? Was that a year ago? Last July 4th. Last Here's the year. reason for the season. 4th. Reason for the season. Uh, they brought him back. They brought Prez back. Although they, they re- rebooted the series. Uh, with a uh, lady prez, uh, she is a teenager who becomes the president of the United States. I'm ugh, very excited. Ugh. A, uh, a, la- a me- female character, ugh, ugh bar- You got a problem with that? Oh my god! Uh, this was from 2015, uh, a six-issue miniseries um, by Mark Russell and Ben Caldwell. I don't really know much about this Ben Caldwell, but Vince, you were saying that Mark Russell has been doing the uh, Flintstone stuff recently? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really Which good. is supposed to be really great. Really, yeah. the socially conscious Flintstones. Um, he's worried about exploitation of Cro-Magnon workers. Um, <laughs> it's good. We um, gotta put that on the list. I'm curious to read that as well. That I mean, I don't know if that's just a great tagline and the book itself isn't great, but... Oh, it's, uh, good. It, it's good. The art's really you've been good, too. It? Yeah, All right. I, I re- it, it, yeah, it's really good. Um, yeah, we'd have to split it up though. I don't want to do that whole series. Okay, yeah. okay, but none of us have read the new press, right? No, we haven't. No. Um, okay, so I'm I'm excited for this because I did really like how, how silly that original was, and I think it could. It's a great basis for a, a cool story. 
I, I really hope there's references to our ongoing war against Transylvania. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see that uh, freaking vampire on that uh, wooden board with wheels <laughs> skating around. God, I might just pull that up and look at it again. That, you know, I know we we've been talking about favorite panels. That might be my favorite panel of the entire like series that we have done. Every single thing we've talked about, that one just sticks in my head the most. And so, you know, I don't know if this new prize is going to live up to those expectations, but I'm excited for it. I love so, how we uh, joked that we were just going to read Prez again. Every July Fourth, he did. did. Well, I think I hope there's another reboot next year. If not, I will write it. We'll read my Prez <laughs> fan fiction. It'll be great. Um, so, uh, hey, listen, thank you so much for joining us. Like I said earlier, uh, if you have any like uh, criticism, comments, uh, stuff you want us to try, just let us know. We'll try it. We're down for whatever. We're uh, we're DTF. <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do anything. Uh, we're down to P- DTP. Was- down to podcast. Uh, <laughs> down for criticism. Uh, yeah. Chris, what's up with Your Stupid Minds, by the way? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, your Stupid Minds, we uh, recently did... Uh, what did we recently do? It's, it's been a couple weeks. Um, we did a uh, recent movie, and now we're going back to 1990. We uh, did a Wings Hauser movie with Robert Zadar uh, a few weeks I ago. I don't know any of the names. Uh, and uh, we're doing another one. This one... Ooh. Uh, with uh, the bad guy is none other than Watergate henchman uh, G. Gordon Liddy. <laughs> oh, wow. In, in a very strange, very bad movie. Uh, so check that out. It should be coming out uh, next week, I believe. It'll very be excited. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's the Your Stupid Minds podcast because your minds are stupid. Uh, <laughs> so to all of our stupid fans listening, thank you so much. We love you. Uh, we hope you will join us next time, uh, even though we just called you out for how stupid you are. But listen, you know it's true, right? All right, talk to you later. <laughs> See you next time. Love you. Bye.